Good morning and welcome to Holy Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Red Bank, New Jersey for our morning worship. Just a few announcements and information about our church. It's a blessing to have you with us this week. This Monday's weekly walk of faith will be at Sandy Hook. We'll meet in the parking lot on the north side of the former Seagull's Nest restaurant, which is parking area D, about one and a half miles from the park entrance at 1 p.m. Please wear your masks and please join us. Our confirmation group will meet this week virtually on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Please be on the watch in your email for the Zoom link. Thank you for all of your continued support, your prayers, and your contributions to sustain the ministry of Holy Trinity Church in Red Bank and our greater community. Please bring any food for the crop walk, especially peanut butter, canned soup, rice, and beans, placed in the bin at the side door of the church. You can also walk in the crop walk. Please contact Molly Ford and reference the email that she sent or contact our church office for more information. Our church office hours are Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And Dina Vergari, our church administrator, is happy to help you. Our outdoor gatherings have been going well with our five cohorts. And as the weather changes, we look forward to moving inside with these groups and restarting our indoor worship. Please refer to email and our church newsletter for more information as our health and safety team continues to meet and bring us back together safely. If you'd like more information about our church or to look at old worship services, you can see us on Facebook or on YouTube or go to our church website, which is htlcredbank.org. Again, thank you for joining us for our Sunday worship and we appreciate your continued support and prayers. And now we will begin our worship with the music of our prayer. Good morning and welcome to Sunday worship here at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Red Bank. And thanks, thank you, Peter, for those announcements this morning. Uh, God's blessings be with everyone who is gathered with us uh, on, online uh, this morning. And I pray uh, that, that God's blessings to be with you and uh, as we start out our week together. Uh, so friends in Christ, let us begin our worship this morning by taking a few moments to confess our sin, but also friends in Christ, hear the promise of God's love, mercy, and forgiveness toward us. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in, in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, 
through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Savior and Lord. And Lord. Amen. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 People of God, our, our scripture text this morning, uh, we will take a few moments to uh, review those at, those at this time. Our first reading uh, comes to us from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18. And in our introduction, we read, Ezekiel challenges those who think they cannot change because of what their parents were and did, or who uh, think they cannot reverse their own previous behavior. God insistently invites people to turn and live. Our psalm this morning is uh, Psalm uh, 25, and Psalm 25 is a psalm of lament, a psalm of lament and a prayer uh, for deliverance from one's personal enemies. Our second reading uh, for this morning is from the second chapter of Philippians. And in the introduction we read, as part of a call for harmony rather than self-seeking, Paul uses a very early Christian hymn that extols the selflessness of Christ in his obedient death on the cross. Christ's selfless perspective is to be the essential perspective we share as the foundation for a Christian accord. Thank you. According to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to Glory you, to Lord. Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, 
By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question if you tell me the answer then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, Sir, I go. But he did not go. Now, which of the two do you think did the will of his father? They said, The first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For you came. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the, and the prostitutes, they believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Sisters and brothers of Christ, again, good morning and God's blessings be with you. To those I may have wronged, I ask for your forgiveness. For those, I'm, for those I may have helped, I wish I could have done more. For the many I neglected to help, I am truly sorry. To those who helped me, I am deeply grateful. This prayer and many others are going to be prayed by our Jewish neighbors as they celebrate the most holiest time in the, in, in, in the Jewish year known as Yom Kippur. Many of you may recall just Last week, uh, the people of persons of Jewish faith uh, celebrated the New Year, Rosh Hashanah, and this evening they will be celebrating a holy, a holy time in the Jewish faith known as Yom Kippur, a time of prayer, a time of fasting, and a time of asking forgiveness from God. I guess, I guess Yom Kippur could be likened to our Christian season called Lent. When I was younger, I didn't, I didn't know a lot about the Jewish faith. I, I, to be honest with you, I just knew that the men walked around with a little beanie cap on their heads and that, they didn't, that Jewish people didn't eat, they didn't eat pork. As a matter of fact, I can remember, as far as not eating pork, I can remember a, a, a commercial many years ago, probably it was in the 1970s, and some of you may recall, it was a commercial where, uh, for Hebrew National Franks, and if you can recall in, in the commercial, there was a gentleman who was dressed up in a costume looking like Uncle Sam, and he's holding a hot dog in his hand, and all of a sudden a voice comes from who knows where during the commercial, and it says the government uh, gives us per, gives uh, people permission to make hamburgers from frozen beef, and we don't. 
The government gives people permission to uh, make uh, 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 these, these uh, hot dogs using artificial color. We don't. The government gives, um, the, gives us the opportunity, it gives us permission to use um, meat byproducts. We don't. And then it all ends by saying the government gives us permission to use uh, in our hot dogs non-meat fillers. We can't. And then the commercial ends by saying we are Hebrew national and we have to answer to a higher authority. In our gospel text this morning from the 21st chapter of St. Matthew, we hear, the, we hear some of the religious leaders coming to Jesus and saying, by what authority are you doing these things? Early on in the 21st ch chapter of Matthew's gospel, uh, Jesus has his, Jesus has this, this triumphant entry into Jerusalem. You see, in Matthew's gospel, by this time, Jesus is, he's coming to the end of his journey. He's coming to the end of his journey. He's coming toward the completion of his mission work. He's, he's, he's journeying to the cross. And in this 21st chapter, Jesus enters the city of Jerusalem, also known as Jesus' triumphant entry. And one of the first things that he does when he enters into Jerusalem is he clears out the temple. He sees the, he sees the people in the temple, they're, 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 they're selling doves and doing all so, sorts of ungodly-like things in the temple. And Jesus, in a fit of anger, goes in and throws over the, the, the money changers' uh, the, uh, tables and, the, and coins get scattered all about on the floor. And he tells the people, get out because you're, you're turning my father's house into a den of robbers. Well, in our gospel text for this morning, we find Jesus again entering into the temple. And, and the people are probably looking at Jesus and saying, well, we know what he did when he came in here last time. We, well, you know what? We, got, we, we have, a, we have a, a question for him. And they go to him and they say to Jesus, by what authority are you doing these things? And then all eyes are on Jesus for his answer. And Jesus responds by saying to his hearers, did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And I could, I could just imagine the religious leaders saying to themselves, well, what are we going to say? Because if we say that it was from heaven, <laughs> Jesus is going to say, well, why didn't, you, why didn't you listen to him? But if we say it was from human origin, we're going to get the people upset because they believed that John the Baptist was a great prophet. So they go back to Jesus and, and they say to Jesus, well, we don't know. We don't know if it was from heaven or if it was from human origin. And then Jesus responds by saying, well, I'm not going to tell you where I get my authority from. And then that goes into the sort of like the second part of our gospel reading. Because like Jesus always does, he finds a way to turn, uh, he turn, uh, turn an event into a teaching moment. And Jesus says to his hearers, what do you think in this story? What do you think? A man had two sons and he, he instructed them to go out and work in the vineyard. And the first son said, I'll go out and work in the vineyard. But he didn't go. And in our story, the, the second son, he says, I'm going to go out and work in the vineyard. But he didn't go. And then Jesus turns to the, to the chief priest in the the elders and the other uh, religious leaders and says, who do you think did the will of the father? Who do you think was the son who obeyed the father? And they all responded by saying, 
It was the first son who did. And then our, and then our gospel story ends with Jesus saying, you know what? The tax collectors and the prostitutes are going to get into heaven ahead of you because you did not believe his message. What was the message that Jesus was trying to teach the people this morning? I think Jesus was challenging them to rethink the idea of who's in and who's out. The chief priests and the elders, they thought they were God's elect. They, they, thought, they thought they had a cornerstone on a relationship with God. But Jesus says to them, you know what? Even the tax collectors, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going to get into heaven before you do. Because, because you, you don't believe the, the word, the message that was being proclaimed to you. And I guess that leads me to the second thing that Jesus is teaching in the message this morning. Jesus challenged their thoughts on authority. Jesus was challenging their, their, th their thoughts on, on authority, but he was also inviting his hearers, he was inviting his hearers into a new way of living. A, a, a way of living that, 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 that involved it involved repentance. He was calling his hearers to, to reorient themselves and toward turn themselves toward God. For you see, that's what repentance really means. It, it, re repentance means to, to turn or to turn away from and turn towards. And that's what Jesus was, that's what Jesus was teaching his hearers this morning about repentance and about authority and whose authority that they were under and whose authority that they were to follow. Authority. Who is it the authority in your life today, friends? Who, who is, is, is the one that you, I guess you could say, you, you take your marching orders from? Or the one that you obey? Or the one that you follow? In this, in this politically charged atmosphere that we're living in, friends, where we find citizens divided on so many issues and so many fronts, as people of faith, as people of faith, I guess you could say we are called, we're called to answer to a higher authority. And that authority is Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
drawn together in the compassion of God. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. In all the world, give your church unity. Inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ. Where the church is powerful and where it struggles, shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our prayer. Your Son took on all of bodily life in our world, even to the point of death. Preserve and keep your creation, O God. Mend and redeem places that are polluted and damaged, so that all of creation confesses you as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn the nations toward life. Where our ways are unfair, give us new hearts and new spirits. Where sin permeates our cultures and institutions, Change our minds and teach us to trust your authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Our lives are yours, O Lord. Relieve the suffering of those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. Defend the lives and welfare of children who are abused or neglected, hungry or exploited, bullied or lonely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn this congregation away from our own interests toward the interests of others. Fill us with your compassion and sympathy. Bless ministries of care in our community. Make us into signs of your mercy and justice for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the needs and intercessions of our church, our community, and our world. We pray, O oh God, that you give strength and courage to those who are sick, shut in, and for all who are in need. And we most especially pray for Terry, Martha, Gail, Jennifer, Don, Doug, Grace, Bruce, Karen, Judy, Rob, AJ, Velma, Jean, Myra, Kathy, Phyllis, and Valda. We pray for Valda Brinbergs and her family. We pray for Jamsetta, Kathy, and family. For Delois and family. For members of the armed forces around the world and for their families. We pray for all who work in health care, for essential workers, and for all persons dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for students and faculty who return to in-person learning and for the schools that they learn in. We pray for our community and for our community leaders. We pray for towns and cities across our country that experience protest, upheaval, and unrest. We pray for our Jewish friends and neighbors who celebrate Yom Kippur we pray for families and friends of our church, Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. And we pray for the ministry of our church and for the ministers within it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for those who have gone into the kingdom ahead of us, tax collectors and prostitutes, likely and unlikely, obedient and slow to learn. By their witness, teach us to confess Jesus the Christ as Lord in our life and in death. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. All things, all these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your loving mercy and care. Through Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And always, friends, it's always a blessing to have you gathered with us online, uh, worshiping with us, and um, invite you to also tune into our Wednesday evening uh, worship that you can find on uh, the church's uh, Facebook and YouTube pages, and that will be at, uh, posted at, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon uh, for your viewing. So friends in Christ, I pray uh, that you have a blessed week in the Lord, and then I invite you to receive the blessing. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen.